How are we doing? Where is my, there we go. Previously on Kimba TV. So if you are going to want to try and long this, at least you know that you gotta, even if you get back out, you gotta get right back in this bitch. You know, that's your value, that's your TPO control. So you might be thinking, you might, oh, I wanna get really cute and get that pixel perfect bottom TPO long. Okay, but regardless of whether you're gonna put blind limits there or you wanna long there, we can all agree, hey, the longer that you take time outside of this value area low, you lose your bullish edge. Um, Alpizi says, talk to me. Any plays you're looking at, Kimba? Yes. Uh, I mean, first things first. Um, we have rotated from previous day value area low to, guess where? Previous day value area high or almost there, 58.8. So this sort of thing is statistical normality, yes. What do we always say about something like this? You like, you, if, basic, basic third grade strategy is you like to long the deviations below. <coughs> and you like to think about shorting deviations above. <coughs> you have the previous month value area low, still at 59.5. Previous day value area high at 58.8. 59 is my, you know, strong sort of level of interest. You got your Fibonacci swing high, swing low from here to there. All right, and that's your 7.5. So I think a lot of people are, you know, have been asking kind of about that 7.5. Um... But yeah, this would be the kind of what you're looking at right now. Um, scalp long would be, um, I did a little bit. Of, were you here for the ETH BTC, LPZ? Um, We did TA on ETH. So um, long story short, brother, here's my new sort of level of interest for ETH. Yeah, so somewhere between like 2300 and 2258. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like calculating. I wanted to do like a 3000 ETH position and then I realized I could lose about half a milli and I was like, no, nah, fuck that. But I could also juice the fuck up though. I could also juice the fuck up though. I don't even know how I would do this. I don't think I have to do this. I think I would know pretty quickly if this wasn't going to work. I don't think I have to do this, but just let's just say 160 bucks. You know, like that. TP1 would be here. I'm already at three to one, you know, and then I would like aim for all of these highs and shit, you know. Bugatti! You know, do I make, do I lose half a milli, but I could make like eight? Or 16. Mm, but yeah, so that would be confluence with the 54. Yeah. I, I'm thinking more higher time frame. Um, but that would have to, that would depend a lot for ETH. ETH BTC would have to kind of help us out. It would really have to stay above this uh, trend line. I mean, you already know what it is about this trend line. Uh, we got to change some structure. We got to clean all of this. I think this will get cleaned at some point, but that's that bullish that we need to be in an ETH long basically before all of this gets swept and this will get swept at some point. So that's kind of the other thing that I'm thinking about too. Um, but um, e that would be like Bitcoin 54, ETH 23 type of shit, I think.
Yeah, and um, I think the that sort of low play probably won't happen until Monday or Tuesday. Would love it for it to be on Monday, LPZ. So I think we just got to be a little bit more patient. Yeah, and then did you see all of the open interest longs open from 54? Lots of confluence at that level. So about 160 million in longs. Okay? So from from that low. So cleaning that 54, you know, cleaning out all these longs and then um Hella shorts open. Oh my god, that would be such an easy fucking long. Uh, assuming you're flat on all. No, I still have my shorts rocking and rolling, LPZ. Yeah, I'm debating if I want to add at 59. Um, but like, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to like, uh, make me freak out when all it's doing on the move up is uh, short squeeze and people TPing their shorts. Yeah. The, the, uh, pump that I know is going to happen is when motherfuckers are bottom shorting. So, but I think the sort of the one that I'm trying to focus on LPZ is if, the longs all get stopped out. And if the bottom shorts are in, then I'm going to be in a pretty nice little sizable long. All righty. But most of my shorts are from 62, 62, 1, 62, 2. So, um, yeah. And I, and I think um, I'm, I'm kind of treating myself a little bit and giving myself a little bit more leeway on the short because I feel like I did a really good job of TPing and uh, old Kimba probably would not have had those TPs. So um, I'm kind of, you know, treating myself a little bit, giving myself, I'm going to wait till tomorrow, you know. But um, I think I did good TPing almost Pixel perfect bottom basically didn't get into a long yet, but in terms of shaving a little bit and doing what I needed to do and um, sticking to it, so yeah, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more leeway and uh, I'm still I'm still having the short spreader. Yeah, so um, hopefully, if it does start to pull back, it waits for me to wake up. All right, but I don't think I'm, there's no, I'm not going to short that, not going to, there's really the only short next would be after all the tops get cleaned. So, yeah, the only thing that I would see is to see if it goes back to like 57, 6 or whatever. Basically, what we talked about earlier in the day, clean that, turn the zone into support. All right. Hey, don't do anything weird. I'm going to sleep for like four or five hours. I'll be back, all right? Um, is the third drive possible? Um, sure, but you probably don't want to go any, any higher than this, to be honest. Because this is like value area low. Yeah, maybe one more is possible. Yeah, but since it is changing structure, this is good. Structure is changing. So I think, I don't know about putting stop loss here. That seems a little bit too hunty. Yeah, I 
think uh, I think stop loss is maybe here better. Boy, it's got to be tested. Tigran says, bro, do you even sleep? Bro, I slept for four hours. Not only did I secure myself at least, at least $800,000 for the end of the year bonus because I was grinding and hustling. We're doing easy math, boy. So I'll give you a hint, so guru. Look at, look at this. Okay, it did this and it just and it rotated to zero five. Okay, what are we going to expect now? Okay, if this did this and this starts heading lower, what are the probabilities for that 57? You're, that's your golden pocket, right? What's the harmonics probability? What does the math say that the probability that that's going to work? Okay. So you actually have an opportunity to show me that you've been learning nerding out on harmonics and Fibonacci probabilities. And if you don't know, you are at a pivotal crossroads. Do you say, oh my God, I can't believe that I've been trading for two years and I still don't know what harmonics are. Or do you just say, fuck it. I don't really care about this. This is just gambling for me. I'm not going to really nerd out on harmonics. That's the juice, that decision. Juicing is a decision. You know that? It's a decision. All right, so guru, but plenty of math to help you out. What's the probability if you get rejected at golden pocket? Do you want to long that or do you want to wait for lower? Mathematica, ho! Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look at this one. Look at this one. Somebody goes, who is looking to sweep him? So this is somebody, somebody, okay? This is somebody that doesn't understand. We wait for edge, okay? And then this motherfucker doesn't understand that we also wait for edge. So he's trying to count. So this motherfucker is trying to copy trade, no edge. And then he's trying to counter trade the copy trader. What the fuck is going on out there, man? So, so there's the copy trader that doesn't understand edge, and then you got the counter trader that's counter trading the copy trader. What the? F I'm telling you, the sentiment analysis bot is going crazy. Do you guys understand what I mean by I can't wait until the data? Do you guys understand that's your competition? So if you can't, if you can't make any, if you can't make more money than that motherfucker, this is not for you. Because there are dummies out there. Yeah, that's Twitter. But, but yeah, that's Twitter. But, um, but that's, that's what I mean by the data is really, really good. Like, I know exactly what's going on out there. Some people, like nerd, get a little, have a little bit too much fun with it. You know, I don't get involved with stuff like that. When, you know, whenever some of the mods or admins want to play like a PSYOPs game, I don't really give a shit. You have my blessing. Do whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty dope. I mean, you got to understand that if you say the word Kimba, whether it's K-I-M-B-A, K-1-M-6-A, K-1-M-B-A, K-I-M-6-A, any different way that you could possibly spell Kimba, you say the word Kimba on Twitch or YouTube or uh, Twitter, I'm going to know about it. And not only will I know about it, but I mean, I'm not going to know about it personally, but the data is going to come in and I'm going to be able to extract value from that. You know what I mean? So it's great. Like you got to understand, like when we, when I worked at Facebook, we came up with everything that we could to motivate your narcissistic and voyeuristic needs to share content. You know, so coin nerds objective or maybe even mine sometimes is to really squeeze value of the haters and make them say something. That's the real juice, right? That's the real juice. Make them say something. Oh, all the copy traders are trapped. Uh, nope. You're actually the one, the copy trader that's trapped. Stop projecting. Gotcha. 
Um, but anyways, so, you know what I'm saying? The data is the data. So it's, it's nothing to just take all of, you know, scrape the data and then pipe, pump it through some like basic sentiment analysis. You know what I mean? All right. This, this is too many lines for me, but, uh, you guys get the idea, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I gave a couple of hints um, live while it was happening. Uh, like, what did it do when it pumped first? What did it do when it came back down? How different does the second pump look? You know, and things like, um, you know, I did 99% of the work, but you guys got to do that last bit. Um. So, and, you know, and just to help me out, just in case if people weren't paying attention or they didn't want to rewind, you know, or if they wanted to be like, ha, 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 copy traders got round trip, go ahead and short, Sato, go ahead and short. I was even saying shit like, uh, Sato shorted the 7.5, you're supposed to long it, hello. I tried to give as many hints as I could without like really fucking people over if you really wanted to short, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, but like I was saying in the morning, I, th I feel like I did 99% of the work. Um, you know, we talked about it at 3.30 in the morning last night. So here's like when you get to figure out, okay, am I just copy trading? Do I understand what the edge is? What were his edges? Did any of them invalidate? Did things change? So, you know, I wouldn't... If you got round tripped or you missed, if you got left at the train station, who gives a shit? You still did great, I think. You know? So, and the only thing that matters is, is one, if you are in a position, make sure you manage risk. Two, if you got left round tripped or left behind, what can you do differently next time? What was the reason and what was the edge that I was talking about that's a level of interest? You know, did any of those reasonings to attempt a long get invalidated on the pullback? T4 says, look, ETH BTC. No, you look at the rewind and you look at me looking at ETH BTC earlier. Okay. What do you, what do we say about this? You tell me if it really is a sweep. T4 trading, it won't lose what? So, th so this doesn't surprise me one bit. That's why I also wait for daily candle closes. If it really is a sweep, T4, it, yeah, so, but it's a follow through. So this isn't surprising. We don't freak out on this. Okay. There, in 12 minutes, the 30 minute candle is going to close. Okay. So we're going to see if it closes below the golden pocket or not. If it closes like this, what does it mean? If this is up here and it closes above the 618, what does it mean? But this doesn't surprise. And I know exactly what to do for both scenarios. What about you, T4? If this is a real sweep, it won't lose what? So this is math happening right in front of your eyes, my boy. All righty. Watch what happens in 12 minutes. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be interesting if it actually holds golden pocket, right? Then it means that it could be swing fail. But if, it, if that is a swing failure pattern, then it's not going to lose the golden pocket retrace. If it closes two candles below the golden pocket, that is not a sweep. And I would be looking for much lower, like this. Um, and then, guess what? Do you, were you here when I did the ETH TA last night? Hey, I already have my ETH plan, my boy. I already have my ETH box. 
Yeah, two weeks from now, motherfucker's gonna be like, wait, when did you draw that? Wait. I'm already planned out. For everything. Okay? So, let's start with this. Okay? Let's see if the 30 minute candle holds. Imagine that. Imagine this motherfucker closes above the golden pocket. We don't know, but I know what that means if it does it, and I know what it means if it doesn't. So I'm just going to have the data tell me. Make sure you're caught up on the gold TA. Make sure you're caught up on the Walmart TA. Just kidding. The DXY TA. The ETH BTC TA. Yep. If it really is a sweep, all right. All right, market makers know that I, I've got dinner reservations. Let's you know what that means. Hey, Sato, tell, tell the Lion Cubs what's going to happen if they don't have good risk management. Sato, tell them what happens if they don't have good risk management. 